All right, hello and welcome to episode six of Around Town. I'm your host, Ben Nemec, and today we are gonna be touring the city of Madison. Uh, I hear a lot from people who are moving here from other places. Hey, we wanna be in Madison because of the schools. It's super convenient to Arsenal, Redstone Arsenal, super convenient to Research Park Boulevard. Century Automotive, gave us an X6 today. I've not been in a in a car of theirs yet that doesn't feel like a race car to some degree. Oh, this thing is nice. My guest today is Vincent Bowles. I'm so excited to have him in the car with me today. He has spent years and years serving our country. He is a retired two-star general in the United States Army. He is now a motivational speaker and a business coach. Vinny. How are you? Hey, sir. How are you? Good to Good see morning. you. I'm well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad you're here. This is beautiful here. Well, uh, I married well. She put this all in. The pool was already in, but she put all this in after you guys. They did a really nice job on it. It's a tough life back here. Uh, I can handle it. I can handle it. I can do the best I can. I work it out. It's not too bad. But how's your things going for you? They're going great. Good. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, no, super. Thanks Good for your time today. Super. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Were you ready to go do this? Let's do it. Good. All right, and we are off. So we're here in the city of Madison. You moved here from where? Uh, I moved here, my uh, last assignment in the Army is Washington, D.C. And I okay. was uh, three years there and moved here in 2009. And we wanted to get away from the D.C. area, but this was an area that gave us uh, still great uh, connectivity to all that's going on uh, in terms of what's going on in the government and uh, yeah. technology. And at the same time, it's, uh, you know, the climate's a lot nicer and a lot better. When you were looking for houses, to move to in this general area, why did you choose City of Madison? Uh, really, we liked it because of its uh, proximity. Uh, the other places we looked at in Huntsville were further south. Okay. And with the traveling and everything else I'm doing, we found the connection to, this is uh, about seven minutes to the arsenal, seven minutes to Research Park, and seven minutes to the airport. So That's it's just, 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 it's just a much better connection for us. Right. Uh, we looked at some other homes, but we really like that, uh, that little subdivision. We're in Stratford Square and the cul-de-sac and just the proximity it gave us everything I need to get to. The, the, the two main things I hear over and over about the city of Madison are the location and mm -hmm. convenience to major things like work and the airport and then also schools. So when you retired from the Army, what was your rank? I was a major general. Major general, that's two stars. It is. What percentage of army officers make it to any of the stars? The math I've heard is that if you take 100 lieutenants who come in the army, when they get commissioned, uh, about one will get selected. Wow. Yeah. Your concept changes when you get to that level of senior leadership. You move from worrying about you and your entity and your branch and your little piece of the army when you become a general officer, the expectation is you're going to do what's best for the Army as a whole, yeah. not what's good for your unit. Favorite restaurant? Oh, favorite restaurant is uh, Nick's Restaurante down in, oh, uh, yeah. off Bailey Cove Road. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard about this it's place. It's phenomenal. So Nick, it. it's, been, it's been open now about uh, seven, eight years. Okay. But they will make, if you call Nick and make a reservation, say, hey, can your guy make, they'll make something special for you if there's a certain Italian dish you really like. That's awesome. Yeah. So we're going to hit Just Love Coffee. Uh, brand new coffee place in Huntsville. It is, uh, right here in this whole new uh, development they've built up. What do you usually get? If you, if you need to get your heart started, the red eye's pretty good. The, the food is really good too. They have these things, they're amazing. They take an omelet, but they put it in a waffle iron. Oh, really? So it comes out looking like a, like a waffle. I'm gonna get a small nitro, I think. So let's talk about what you're doing now, and it has a lot to do with leadership. It does. Uh, I, I discovered that there's a market for leadership keynote speakers to go around and speak to corporate association audiences about leadership and how that works. And then that, based on my military experience, it's what we do all the time. We train and grow leaders. Yeah. If you're not getting your folks better, if you're not get, helping their best get better, then you, you shouldn't expect the company to get better as well. Yeah. So I, I, I put that book together. It took about, uh, about 12 months to uh, okay. put it together. And uh, the hardest thing I ever did, but it's been tremendously filling and rewarding. We're in our seventh printing now. That's awesome. So that's been a culmination. That book is a culmination of your experiences. Well, it started when I came back from Iraq and they sent me to the training base in the Army. 
and I would see every uh, officer class, every leadership class that came through. So they were asking me, sir, how do I get troops ready to go to combat? How do I deploy? How do I take care of uh, you know, some of the instances that may occur in combat? When you want people to do something as a leader, you may be asking them to do something their instincts say they don't want to do it. Right. They'll only do it if they trust you. So I, I built the 4321 uh, thing, put it together. You were featured on the Paul Feinbaum show. <laughs> I was. It's, How did that happen? In all that discussion at the end of the season about coaches moving and getting fired and everything else, what about the kids? Yeah. What about those players? Right. Those players had sat across the table, and the real kicker for me was at the time the Florida State coach, he had gone from being a head coach in Florida to being the head coach at Oregon to going back to Florida State yeah. in 13 months. And I'm lying there and I'm going, I've got Feinbaum's email address. So I sent him an email and said, hey, here's three things we need to think about. We need to think about, what about the kids? Yeah. We need to think about, what is, what is a successful coach? What right. are the components? Because we haven't time figured it out. Yeah. Because we swap them out so frequently, there's no metric for a successful coach. Yeah. I sent that off at five o'clock in the morning. I felt better, so I got that off my chest. That afternoon, I get an email from Fine Brown producer saying, Paul wants you on the show. Because he wants to use it to talk about leadership yeah. and leading folks. And he asked me once, he said, what's the one thing people should learn about leadership? I said, the one thing I have found in 40 plus years of doing this works every time. It never fails. Yeah. Self-aware leaders beat self-absorbed leaders. Self-aware always beats self-absorbed. So the thing I do when I'm sizing leaders up is I'm asking, are they self-aware about what's going on about yeah. them? Are they self-absorbed about how this affects me? And Paul got real quiet when I said that, and he says, I could listen to you all day. Yeah. And my agent was then high-fiving, saying, oh my God, this is wonderful, this is great. Yeah, yeah. So that, that spun off the things, but it's been interesting. And uh, wow. who knew? People thinking about or people moving to this area, mm -hmm. what should they know? Uh, first off, uh, cost of living is good. The combination of industries and growth that's here in the Madison County, Huntsville, Northern Alabama area is, is unlike uh, many uh, anywhere else in the country. And I know a lot of folks say that, but you know, in the next uh, decade, this will be the largest city in the state of Alabama. Right. But uh, there, there's a pull to this place. Uh, I, I've got uh, relatives who say to me uh, from up in New York, I was, you're, you're in Alabama? Yeah. And I'll go, uh, you just got to come visit. And it's like people told me, you just got to come visit. And there's a, there's a special magic of this place. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the book. Hey, thank you. And uh, the hardest thing I ever did, but uh, hopefully there'll be some news you can use. I appreciate that. All the best. Take care of yourself, man. All the best. Thanks. Good luck.